Hi, I'm Jason Smart. I'm in Tallinn, capital of Estonia. I'm here to see the old town because Tallinn has one of the best preserved medieval old towns in Europe, full of towers, stone walls and a magnificent town hall. It's also got a few memorials to the Soviet past which I'm hoping to see. So let's get on and see what Tallinn has to offer on this cold March day. So I'm at the start of the old town, passing by a flower market here and those down there, Biru Gates, which were part of a huge medieval fortress complex which spanned the whole of the old town in the 14th century. Most of it was knocked down in the 19th century to build roads and stuff. But I think they give you a flavour of what's to come in Tallinn. So I just found a souvenir shop. It was by a magnet. Quite like the look of that one there. There we are, purchase made. So I'm at the start of Catherine's Passage, which used to be full of old medieval and craftsmen and artisans. Let's have a wonder of this medieval place. Looks amazing. I'd love to have stepped back in time and seen this during the Middle Ages. As long as I was a lord, not a peasant. So these are tombstones found in the Church of St. Catherine. And they're of rich men from this part of the world. For instance, this first one is from 1381, someone called Kunigund Schottelmund. Oh my God, this seagull has just killed a pigeon. Look at that. That's horrendous. Keep yourselves hidden, boys, with those things on the loose. So the great guild hall behind me was where the master craftsmen and artisans used to meet and plan their next move in the marketplaces, whether to keep prices fixed, whether to hire more apprentices. They held massive sway in Tallinn. So here are three of the 26 towers that originally stood and surrounded the old town of Tallinn. So let's climb up to Euro entrance. <laughs> up I go. Made it. It appears you can actually go even higher. So I'm in the tower. So, do you want some interesting facts about Estonia? Number one, 50% of the country is covered in forest. Number two, it's the least religious country in the world. Number three, it has the most supermodels per capita in the world. And number four, it invented the Christmas tree. More on that later. So I'm on my way to St. Olive's Church. But just look how medieval Tallinn looks. It's amazing. So there's the uh, tower of St. Olive's. During Soviet times, the KGB used that tower as a radio antenna. So there's a strange legend to do with this church. When the spy was being built, the local guildsmen decided they had to have a proper builder doing it, but didn't have any money. Luckily, a stranger turned up and said he'd build the spire for free, as long as they could guess his name. And if they couldn't, by the time he'd finished, he would have all the town's gold, and they agreed to that. So people tried to guess his name, no one got it right. He kept on building, nearly finished, and then a spy went round to his house where his wife was and his baby, and they heard her singing. She was singing, don't worry baby, Olav will be back soon. So they knew his name. When he found out, he fell off the top. So I'm outside 59 Pick Street, and this nondescript building here was the former headquarters of the KGB, and they used this lower floor to torture and interrogate prisoners, thus the bricked windows, so people couldn't hear the screams. So this is the house of the Brotherhood of Blackheads, a guild of young unmarried merchants in medieval Tallinn. They had organising celebrations, sorting out the city's defences, and like I mentioned earlier, they were responsible for the first Christmas tree in the world, but instead of putting baubles on it, they danced around it and set it on fire. Here it is. So 
So I'm standing in the Town Hall Square, which in medieval times was a busy marketplace full of stalls and merchants. According to legend, there was a man called Panique, and he ordered a pancake or a beer, depending which story you read, but he wasn't happy with it, so he ordered another, and he wasn't happy with that. So in a fit of rage, he murdered the waitress. So he was dragged out into the street, and he was executed, and there's a place in the square that marks that spot, and here it is. The only surviving Gothic town hall in Northern Europe. And it's hard to see, but that weather vane known as Old Thomas has been there since the 14th century. Tallinn is just amazing. Like a medieval cart. And then these buildings. So I'm standing in Freedom Square commemorating the Estonian War of Independence between 1918 and 1920. This is called Kiek in the Kok, which means peek into the kitchen, because apparently the guards there could look down into the kitchens below. So what I'm actually looking for are some cannonballs embedded into the outside walls from 1577, but I can't see them yet. I might be staying right at them, but I can't see them. Found quite a nice little area with some eerie statues. So this magnificent building behind me is the Alexander Nevsky Cathedral, built in 1900 when Estonia was part of the Russian Republic. Amazing building. And just opposite, the Parliament building. The pink Parliament building. And along the other side of it, that massive tower is called Pick Hermans. And every morning at sunrise and every evening at sunset, that flag is raised and then lowered. So that flag flew up there from 1920 to 1940 until the Soviets came. And then there's obviously the hammer and sickle. And then independence, 1991, up it went again. I've just come to a quiet little park and there's a special monument here. It's called the Linda Monument. And for some reason, it's become like a focal point for people to remember the victims of Soviet oppression. So I've left the old town and I'm heading into the more modern part of the city and maybe head to the port area, which is about a 20 minute walk away down here. So I've reached the port area. You can see a ferry back there. It could be going to Helsinki. They often do this route. Two hours, you're in Helsinki. My ship. So I'm making my way back to the old town, just passing a fantastic little church. It's made of wood. Yeah, I love the Indian domes and the green painted wood and the crosses on the side. So I've just read about this liqueur which is produced here called Varna Tallinn, which is a mixture of rum with citrus oil and cinnamon and vanilla. So that's my next mission, get some of that. Right, found a supermarket, let's try to find some of that liqueur. And there it is, Varna Tallinn. There you go, purchase made. And even though it's three o'clock in the afternoon, cheers. Cheers from Tallinn, mm, it's quite nice. So now just wandering aimlessly, passing this little gorgeous well on a gorgeous street. It's just one gorgeous street after another. So I'm back near the hotel, so I hope you've enjoyed my tour of Tallinn, where I've seen guild houses, orthodox churches, castle turrets, medieval streets, skyscrapers, and racy statues like this one. But that's it. Goodbye from Estonia. I'm Jason Smart, and if you've liked this travel video, please click subscribe.